We'll have to edit that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Chad McCormick. I'm from Noble High School in North Burrow, Maine. And this morning, I'm going to be talking to you about something that I do with my students and have been doing for um, the last four or five years now, which is have them do a photo journal of their build process. Um, and this presentation is called Blogging the Build. Uh, in this picture, uh, we have Dave Parker, who's also one of the STEM guitar instructors, and there's me. And this is our workshop space at Noble High School, or the, the classroom off of the workshop. We've got some kids back there uh, finishing up the setup of, of their instruments, and then here's one that just got finished. Um, the student, very proud of his build, an excellent student, um, and he now has a completed document of his build um, from the unpacking of the raw kits from the boxes through until what you see here today. Uh, that's what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. So at Noble High School in North Berwick, um, we have the electric guitar building class as, an, uh, as a school day offering. It's a semester long course and it's a half a science credit. And a student earns a grade for the course um, based on their achievement in three thirds. Um, the first third is the weekly blog entries, which is what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. Um, every week, there's just a 10-point scoring rubric. Four points, um, so just get on the board with uh, photos, one or more photos from, from the week. Uh, two points, a description of what you accomplished during the week. Two points, a description of the tools used along the way that week. And two points, just a, a description or discussion of a new piece of learning throughout the week. So every week there will be a picture or pictures accompanied by at least a bulky paragraph or a half a page or maybe even a bit more uh, hitting these three two-point topics right there. Um, we usually stop class a little bit early on Fridays. They have to um, take photos if they haven't already and then they have by the start of class on Monday to have that blog entry or journal entry posted for that previous week. If it's late, I ding them a couple of but that's you know up to up to you, the teacher, to, to decide on or your your scoring scheme um, or how you implement. It. This is just how I do it. Um, another third of the uh, course grade comes from the academic assignments and quizzes. So these are the MLAs that we've been talking about, um, or other sorts of research things I might have my kids do, uh, participation in discussions in the classroom uh, surrounding the build or other STEM topics relating to the build. Uh, and then the final third is the final instrument inspection and you guys will experience a, um, an evaluation at the end of your build, um, which is kind of how I've modeled mine to use with my students. All right, so why do we blog? Well, I got a few different reasons. I want to get students reflecting on what they did that week. I want to get them writing. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a STEM course. It's not a, an English class. I'm not expecting them to be writing like, you know, a big long essay every single week, but I want to get them writing about what it is that they did in their hands-on class. Uh, and I want to get them sharing, not only with their peers, uh, but also to the broader STEM guitar building family. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, we have a 10-point scheme, four points for photos, uh, two points for a description of the accomplishments from during the week, uh, two points to identify the tools used, uh, and two points for uh, a discussion of, of one or more pieces of new learning from the week. All right, and I just mentioned about the broader STEM guitar family. Um, we've used WordPress in the past, so every student will come up with a WordPress account. Um, and here are all my students right here for the particular class. Um, and it's really great once you get it set up as a student posts their blog entry, if, if I as the teacher subscribe to the to their blog, I can get a little email notification when they've posted. So I don't need to be logging into WordPress and checking who posted, who posted, who posted. I'll, I'll get an alert on my email, I can click on it, it'll bring me right to their blog, and then I can do the evaluation on that 10 point scale. Works really nice. And this is just, you know, how the, how the reader in WordPress is organized. Here's my Gmail showing that the, uh, the WordPress can be activated or, or accessed right there in the email environment. Um, here's some examples of um, student work. 
here's a week one entry, just like you guys did. They'd have to design a headstock and rough cut it on the bandsaw before going to the spindle sander and cleaning it up. Um, so here's a some student photography work, and this was pulled right off of their, their blog post. Their entry would look just like this on the reader, and I just grabbed like a few snippets from each of these to share with you. So this is a student, um, Jake, from first week, and I'll just highlight one of the sentences here. Uh, Jake says, I looked up headstock designs for an idea of what I wanted to do, and then drew my design onto a piece of paper, just like you guys did. Uh, I then put my, I put my design over my headstock and traced an outline of where to cut on the headstock to get the shape I wanted. After that, I took my guitar neck to the bandsaw and cut away break points. He's talking about those relief cuts um, to the outline of my headstock design. As I cut, the breakaway points would take off chunks of wood so I would not have to make one continuous cut. Um, after all the cutting, I got the shape to my headstock, and after sanding, I will have the shape of my headstock sorted out. So there's Jake talking about what he did in that first week. <clears throat> Uh, here's another student in week two. Um, we got into some soldering early in this particular class. They said this week before vacation we soldered the volume tone knobs in the jack, uh, which getting that finished was a rewarding feeling. We had to ground the wires to each of the things that we were soldering. A tad bit confusing at times, but I got through it. It's fantastic to actually wire things up. I've always wanted to do something like that, but I never have. So here's an instance of a student sharing that new type of learning that they enjoy, that they've always wanted to have an opportunity to do, and now with this class you're offering those opportunities. Um, there's a body straight out, of the, straight out of the box and ready to be shaped. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Sorry this was late, by the way. They say at the bottom of that entry there. Um, this is about the volume of the writing that accompanies the photos. A little snippet from that. Um, what I learned this week is about the wood species, alder. What I found out about the wood was where it came from, the Jenka hardness rating, common cost, and just, uh, and just other different specs about the wood. Um, on, oh, one little fact I did know about it is that all wood has a scientific name. The scientific, scientific name for alder is Alnus rubra. I don't know, I'm not a Latin guy, but I think I said that right. Oh, this has to do with uh, one of the MLAs um, that you can find on the website. That's the activity that they're referring to there. Which is a great early MLA when they're unpacking their guitars and, and inspecting their body for the first time and wondering about what types of woods are, are being used. Um, here's a fingerboard. Um, all the kids love it. I have them really uh, polish those things up and I have them hold them up in the light. Um, they always get a kick out of that. So this is sixth week into the class. I also sanded down my fretboard. You guys were here day two. All right, so this is six weeks into the course. I sanded it with a uh, flat sanding block. They're talking about that 12 inch radius sanding beam there uh, until the white plastic was gone. Oh no, that was flat on the table until the plastic was gone. Um, and then there were no marks left on the face of the neck. Then I used 600 grit sandpaper with my fingers uh, to also sand down the fretboard. And then they wanted to keep going, going. I said, all right, let's do it. Uh, so we went all the way up to a 2,000 grit sandpaper. Um, the wood was so shiny you could see the reflection of the light on the fretboard. So these students are just writing about what they experienced during the week. Um, on this particular week here, we did a little bit more classroom time and not as much building. This is that spreadsheet um, activity that we were talking about the other day. So this is a screenshot from the student's blog entry. I didn't get too much done, but I did learn some stuff in just one day. In the beginning of Tuesday's class, we learned about fret spacing and how to calculate all of the fret spacing. We ended up making a spreadsheet all the way to the 24th fret um, of a, the measurements, a few typos there, um, of the frets, which was really cool and also convenient. Compressing frets. You guys just experienced this magic yesterday. tool I used for pressing frets was a drill press with a bit meant to press frets, referring to that pressing call that you guys used in the arbor. We used it to drill press. Uh, the tools I used for shaping my frets were a file, beveling file, a tool that made the frets angles on both sides, they're talking about the beveling file, um, and flush to the fretboard and a flat, uh, fretboard and a flat file. Uh, another entry here. 
got the first um, layers of clear coat on my guitar neck. I finished my guitar body as well. I had to finish and polish it so it's shining like a gem. This is Jake, I remember, the, the first one. This one's great. Um, this student here um, has a very artistic father, and they did this um, this manga, kind of oriental, comic book type art <clears throat> on it. Um, the student was tremendous, just did a fabulous job start to finish. Kaylee was her name, and uh, she actually played this guitar at a park gazebo open mic thing in the springtime, like the week after the class finished up. Pretty awesome. Finished it, it looks fantastic, and it's all mine to play. I'm so happy with my guitar. Finished stringing, then intonation, tuned up and ready for playing. I learned so much from this class, and I wanted to thank Mr. McCormick, everybody spells it M-I-C-K, it's M-A-C-K, take note. Um, and Mr. Parker for giving me the opportunity to build this guitar. I can't believe it is already finished. Um, sitting here strumming my favorite songs on it right now as I'm writing this. So, um, one excited kid who made it to the finish line. All right. Um, are there difficulties? Sure there are, sure there are. Um, all students love the build experience, but what are they not so excited about? all the time. But some struggle to meet the academic expectations, including the weekly blog entries. So those are the difficulties. Do we have some solutions? Of course we do. Um, a student may not begin work on their build if a blog entry from the previous week has not yet been posted. So on Friday we stop, we clean up a little bit early, they take their photos, they've got through the weekend and through Monday up until class starts. Uh, I take attendance at the start of class Monday and I check my email and I'm looking for notifications in the email that their blog entries have posted. If not, I write their name on the board, they grab a laptop out of their cart or grab their own device and they can't start in in the shop on their build unless that blog entry is posted and they get dinged a couple of points on the grade. Um, Blog entries may be amended if a student fails to address one of the required components. So I, I let them, you know, come back and, you know, if they completely miss or leave out of one of the two-point components, I'll make a note in, in the little evaluation for that week. So go back and include that. I'll give you one of those points back. Um, students with special needs in writing are provided with a template to use for constructing their weekly entries. Um, I had a student that just was a really, really struggling writer. So I sat with him and we came up with almost like a, almost kind of like a Mad Libs sort of thing, like a, like a fill in the blank kind of graphic organizer thing. Um, and every single week he met all of the requirements that were required um, to meet those 10 points. What are students saying? Um, your student hate class of 2020. The blogs are a good way of keeping track of our work. They're also useful to show my parents what I did in my guitar building class that week. Uh, blog entries are extremely helpful. This is uh, Aaliyah, who just graduated uh, this spring. They help you remember that you do uh, what you do over the course of the week. Blog entries are also helpful in the sense that you learn different tools and how to use them in case you need to use them for a different project. Um, Kaylee, her best friend in the class. Um, I think that blogs aren't like normal homework. They aren't hard to do. I like to do them because I'm talking about what I was able to accomplish, and I like the blogs also because I can look back and trace my progress to see how my guitar is coming along. And then one more here. Um, Aiden, this was the student that was in that very first photo with myself and Dave. He had his finished guitar. Uh, the weekly, blog, uh, weekly guitar blogs were actually very cool to do in my opinion. After you complete your guitar, you can look back on your pictures and the progress you made. I think that's it. Oh, one more, John. Uh, it's, Actually, John, I had all three of, there's a, a John, a Joe, and a Josh from the family. I had all three uh, through the program. Uh, to me, the blogging progress was a great way to see how much I did during the week, and it helped me to appreciate my instrument even more once it was done, because I could look at it and see exactly how much, I, uh, how much work I put into it. It was also cool to see all the stages that the instrument went through before being completed. And that's blogging the build. It's just one thing I do. It's an integral part of my class. Um, it's part of the language of the class. The kids know it as a weekly expectation. Um, like I said, it makes up a third of their grade. And that's how I implement. Um, I'm not saying, and, and we as the STEM guitar 
group are not saying that this has to be done. A lot of us like it, and we like doing something like it. Um, this is just an idea for you to maybe grab a hold of and, and use in your own classroom if, if you think it would do the trick for you and your kids. And that's that. Any questions? Andy says, do you, uh, do you do standards-based grading at all in your school? Standards-based grading? Um, yes, but for an elective like this, um, we kind of we can kind of fly under the radar. It's more in the core classes that have to be, be the standards aligned. Um, a lot of the MLA content, the academic side that goes along with the bill, um, as you'll see on the materials that you get from the website, are aligned to Common Core State standards and, and Next Gen Science standards, um, but. For the student to earn credit in class at this particular school, I don't have to, you know, check particular boxes in order for them to meet the credit, and that's just because it's an elective. <coughs> excuse me, it's an elective class um, that I'm allowed to have have that kind of leeway. Any more questions? This is great because I think in our school um, we have writing is a very important part of the equation, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people would ask, well, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to implement writing into a course like this? Yeah. And blogging, we do Schoology, um, yeah. where you can yeah. respond to somebody else's, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff yeah. is incredibly important for them to be writing, academically, but mm -hmm. also reflective writing. Yeah. It's extremely important to us. Yeah. Absolutely. So, that actually gave me, or reminded me of an idea. Um, something that I want to do but haven't done is... Um, either built into the 10 points or make an additional point. Um, you know, students need to respond to at least one other student's entry from the week um, as, a, as a graded element to kind yeah, of yeah, foster that. Like we, have, we have WordPress allows you to do that. WordPress? WordPress okay. is the, um, the platform that we use, the environment that we yeah. house our, our blogs in. Yeah. It is free. And we have Schoology yeah. already, so that's what Yeah, you can do WordPress websites and pay for a big package, or you can just have a WordPress blog, which is free, and as far as I understand, will always be free. That's kind of like the WordPress way. You like to pay for stuff. Yeah, like pay for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you had mentioned earlier this week that you used Google Sites last year in the past. What yep. were the pros and cons? I used, um, I had all students do a Google Doc and it was a journal instead of an online blog entry. It was still the exact same thing. It was just housed in a Google document instead of a blog. Um, but I've already decided I'm going back to a, a WordPress um, in the fall. Um, yeah. So I wanted to share with you guys the WordPress, um, which I did at my last school, um, because to me it was just a better experience than the Google Doc thing. I mean, all of the students could give sharing or viewing privileges to everyone else in the class, but it didn't really work that way. When it's on the website, you can subs uh, subscribe to other blogs so that when you go on to view your blog, you get the little thumbnails of what the other people are doing, and it's just a, a better environment, I think. So, Tom says? Uh, Google Classroom. I don't know if anybody uses Google yeah. Classroom. I don't know if there's a module in Google Classroom that you can do something like this or not. I'm not, a, I'm not familiar well, enough. I'm certain there is. I'm certain there is, yeah. I, I actually, for my photography class, I use Blogger, which is a blog that you can upload and share with students. Off of Google, mm -hmm. um, and then I have my kids submit their their photos to Classroom, which alerts me that they've updated their so you blog. So get that notification. Yeah, but which it's tells still you. it's still not tied totally together yet. You know, like okay. so they have their classroom stuff they have to do, and then their blogger post. But I've been using it a couple of years, and I I, enjoy, I find it pretty slick. I, I like it. And again, I'm I'm just sharing and one thing pretty, that I do yeah. and and yeah. how I do it, but just right. the concept of having like a weekly journal or blog mm -hmm. or something where you can yeah. get your kids to hit the things that you as a teacher want them to hit aside from just building a great instrument. Mm -hmm. you know? This is cool that it's all in one spot because like I said I have to that's I'm running two spot. separate things. Right. But but it's free though so yeah. yeah. And here at Google School. Yeah. yeah but you have Google sites which mm -hmm. maybe would be a better environment than the docs. 
Linux. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I used WordPress successfully for a number of years, so that's just my comfort that's zone. Um, but everybody is going to you know, use their own thing, for sure.